Hello viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. About 18 months ago, we did this video explained Russian SAM system, surface to air missiles, SA-2, so that's 1957, to SA-23, 2013, where we go through the various sounds, we talk about them, and then we shot them at my friends. A lot has changed in DCS in the last 18 months, and we now have the remaining sounds, if you like, up until 2023. And so we wanted to do a second video to add on these extra SAMs. We've got, for instance, the SA-21, the S-400 you've probably heard of from 2007. We've got three additional TORs, member of the SA-15 family, uh, M2, M2K, M2M, up to 2022. We've got uh, SA-22, that's a new uh, site for DCS, Panzer, S1, S2 and SM, 2012 to 2023. We've got the S350 from 2020, and we've got a placeholder for the very new S500 Prometheus from 2021 anti-ballistic site. The structure of the video will be similar to the previous. First, uh, we're actually going to spend a few minutes talking about the old video and the old SAMs, just to uh, go through a bit of history to see how we got here with these modern SAMs. Then we're going to have a little look in 3D around each SAM site and go over a few data sheets because data is important. And then for each SAM, I'm going to shoot them at my friends. I've got uh, CH here to help me with the tech stuff. Hello, CH. Hello. First, I'd just like to spend a few minutes going through the first video. It's really annoying viewers because in the last uh, 18 months, I've learned so much about SAMs and missiles that I just didn't know back then. So I'd love to go through and do all this again. Uh, and I'm sure I made a million and one mistakes in there. But uh, time uh, does not allow me at the moment. It takes a couple of days to make these really big ones. But uh, maybe one day. Out of interest, we started with the SA-2, 1957. In fact, the way these names work, viewers, is that that is a designation from NATO. SA-2, SAM-2, that is the designation from Russia. Or the Soviets, uh, S-75, it's more of a, a name. Uh, there's the NATO name, guideline, and there's the Russian name, Davina. Then SA-3, uh, 1960s, uh, S-125, Goa, NATO, Neva and Pekora to Russia. SA-5, first super long-range site, uh, known as S-200 to Russia, Gammon, Angara, Vega, Dubna. SA-6, Gainful to NATO, Kub to Russia. SA-8, Gecko, Osa. SA-9, uh, short-range heat-seeking, uh, SAMS, Australia 1. And its older brother, the SA-13, go for Australia 10M3. Then we get into some really big SAMs, SA-10. We've got a Bravo model here, S-300, Russia calls it. You, you may know them. They're still operating in Ukraine. In fact, they still operate in Russia, S-300. Uh, Grumble B uh, to NATO. Uh, we had an SA-10D, uh, Grumble D. SA-11, a medium-range site, Gladfly, known as Buk. To Russia. I'm sure you've heard about them. Then anti-ballistic site. SA-12, known as the S-300V, firing the Gladiator and Giant missiles. Back to short range. SA-15, Gauntlet, known as Tor. Uh, SA-17, an improved Buk, Buk M. SA-19, Tunguska, Shorad, Greason, known as Tunguska, to the Russians. Uh, an upgrade from the SA-10s is the SA-20. We've got the A and the B here. Russian designations S-300 PMU-1 and S-300 PMU-2. Big semi-active radar-guided missiles with a range of about uh, 150 miles with this guy here. They did make an S-300 PMU-3, the next version, but they renamed it the S-400, uh, redesignated SA-21 by NATO, known as Triumph for Russia. And I'm sure you all know about S-400. Uh, now, we did not actually have it in this video here, so that was just a placeholder. We will be looking at that. The last one we had in uh, this first video was the SA-23, uh, S-300 V4. It's a later version. It's a V, so it's an anti-ballistic site uh, version 4. And that was it, which brings us on to today. First, let's go and have a look around S-400 Triumph. We've got a CP, which most of the big SAMs have, a command post. It all looks nice and good. Note how big everything is, viewers. Everything here is to scale. I'm a Jeep. Look how big that freaking command post is. Um, we've got a uh, search radar here. Again, absolutely giant piece of kit. We've got another search radar, but this is a search radar uh, for looking over the horizon to look down on targets. It's the track radar, that antenna there will actually point at the target to uh, acquire a track required for missile firing. These are TELs, T-E-L, Transporter Erector Launcher, giggity. 
Uh, we've got two types because we've got various types of missiles. This is Tel A, which will probably be carrying the 48N series of missiles. And this one here is the Tel B, probably carrying the 48 series of missiles as well, and the 9M. 96 series of missiles let's have a look at the data sheet the s400 has many different types of missile like just about any modern sam site the reason is one type of missile can't do everything one missile can't be an anti-ballistic missile and shoot down aircraft well and shoot down helicopters well and shoot down drones well and shoot down cruise missiles so you have various types of missiles that are added over time. The S-400 consists of three main types of missile. We have the 9M96 series here, the older 48N6 series here, and the very expensive and rare 40N series here. CH, I'm going to say what I know about these and feel free to interrupt me at any point, but the 9M96 series are relatively small, under half a ton in weight, relatively low range in that they are medium range up to about 75 80 miles they are active radar homing so they have their own radars on board and after some initial guidance from the master radar will actually guide themselves to target they don't have a specific job none of these missiles have a specific job they can all sort of shoot at everything but some missiles are like i said are better at shooting at certain things and these would be primarily used for low flying targets for uavs for cruise missiles um, and they're also very maneuverable compared to the larger missiles the mainstay of the S-400 is this, the 48N series. This will probably be the one that shoots you down if you're in an aeroplane. Range up to about 150 miles. Fairly old missiles. They uh, come from the uh, SA-20 that we sort of looked at earlier. Big missiles. They weigh two tons, so probably more than your car. Really big missile. I need to get the range. And you can see the speeds and the altitudes and stuff here. Semi-active radar homing, a kind of older type of of homing in that they will be guided all the way to the target by the mother radar that's not quite true actually because these are tvm track via missile yeah. uh, so the hostile will be illuminated via the radar from the site because these don't have their own radars on that radiation will bounce off the hostile aircraft be intercepted by this missile here and then it will essentially guide itself to that target the beautiful thing about tvm and um, patriot works the same patriot pack 2 you may know there is no guidance from the main sites which could be intercepted by the hostile aircraft which would allow the hostile aircraft to know that they're being shot at so the hostile air aircraft knows that the s-400 site is looking at it it knows that it's tracking its movements but it does not know that it's guiding a missile and will almost certainly see that come to play. Are you happy with this description so far, CH? Uh, we might add, uh, because it says semi-active radar homing, that is because uh, they mostly use TVM until they go to the last phase, because TVM isn't, when it sends its corrections, it won't be uh, as uh, fine-tuned as you need it. So it switches over like an active radar will switch on its radar. The semi-active will go from TVM to the semi-active radar homing and actually hone in on it to be more precise. That's oh. usually how they work. I did not know that. Does that mean that you'll get a kind of last-minute warning? It should mean that. Uh, I don't have every detail on all of these, but that's mm. usually how you do it. You, you go from the first phase is to the late because TVM isn't good enough for all the way. And I should also mention about the 9M96 uh, you mentioned there. Mm -hmm. uh, these are actually also the older versions. They mm -hmm. ha have uh, newer versions yeah. like the D and so forth with even longer ranges than these uh, in, in production and in service now. Finally, there's the big bertha here this is kind of what made the reputation of the s400 it can go 400 kilometers 240 miles staggering weapon uh two tons of weapon um semi-active or active and the whole idea of this is that it can shoot targets a long long way away even if it can't see it so this guy here the site needs line of sight to the target this guy here it, that's sort of true sort of not uh we might talk about that later this one here can be guided in without the site actually seeing the target uh, that said this sort of doesn't really exist uh, they're very i don't know what you think about this but i've heard very few reports of 40 n sixes yeah. actually being fired and they're just too expensive and i'm sure they're just in reality very complex to work something like this note that the site we have in dcs does not have this missile here kind of for the reasons that we said we'll set it to maximum skill level viewers i'll give it a more tactical dispersion with some more launchers and um, see how my guys fare
The boys today are going to start 40 miles away at 26,000 feet. They're in F-16s. So they are Simba, Strider, Cannonball, and Poosh. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello, boys. You have one task, which is armed with your gun only to find the S-400. I haven't shown you where it is, uh, which means you're going to get have to get shot at to try and locate its position via smoke or its radar source. You are going to get as close as you can and try and strafe it with your gun. I've not set any rules, so do what you think is best. Good luck, boys. Track radar is moving. Let me know when you're getting spiked uh, by it. Viewers, when you're getting spiked, it means that the site is locking onto you with its radar. They will know when they get spiked. They will not know when the missiles are fired at them because, as we said, they are TVM, track fear missiles. Somebody's getting tracked. Right, so they are spiked, they are tracked. If you're getting tracked, there's a good chance that missiles are being fired, guys. In fact, I've got to talk the viewers through it, so I'll just tell you. They have fired at you. They have fired the first set of missiles, which are the 486D. Uh, smoke in the air. And they've seen the smoke. One major problem with Russian missiles is that almost all of them are smoked and easy to see. Dropping out around Mark 5. Let's try and get a tactical situation here. Dark's joined us, I see, as well. Guys have all gone low. They have to break the line of sight. Because this is TVM, it still requires the target to be illuminated by the original radar. And that Send there... lock broken. That there was them breaking the line of sight. So that is one weakness of this type of missile. That's why the, uh, the 9M series uh, active Spike. missiles are superior for over-the-horizon work. If they're spiked, they're probably being shot at. Four eight series again fired. Again, they need to illuminate the aircraft with the originating radars. Clean. Spike. Yep, they're still illuminating someone, but I don't know who it is. Missiles only burn for a few seconds. Obviously, they require uh, the the rest. Of oh. They were going for Cannonball, but he's now broken line of sight. Right. Well done, guys. Trying to notch to draw him out. Roger. So the guys are locating the site by its missiles, the smoke it makes, and its radiation source. Of course, they can see its radiation with the RWRs. You can see the track radar there. Ooh. Hey. See a change target there at the last minute. When they detonate, detonate like Lots that, of tracking. it's because they've lost the line of sight. Wow, you guys are getting well close. Well done. Real clear visual. Yep. Right, they still are illumina illuminating a hostile. Somewhere. We're going to see the 9M series of missiles coming out. Active missiles. Well, that is if they can see these guys. I don't think I can see these boys. They will have a R min, a minimum radius of fire. If the boys can get within R min, they can no longer be fired at. That would be the job of the short rad. That's a 9 6 went out. That's an active missile went yep, out. Yep, that's over top of me. Yep. I'm inside of men. Everything launching is going over me. They're launching at me. Oh, Simba, Simba, you, no, he got two. Still one man's getting through. Okay, Simba's death allowed another guy to get in. Now, as long as he can stay within the minimum range, he's safe. Can he do that? Yes, in real life, he'll be blatted out by Panzer and whatnot. Again, that's not what we're into today. That's a 4-8 series went out. Nice. Site destroyed, guys. Well done. So as you can see, the S-400, as powerful as it is, if it doesn't have Shorad, it's very easy for these guys to get in. If there was Shorad there, as we're about to see next, then it's going to be much more difficult for them to get closer like that. These power lines are scary. Next, viewers, short range, short range air defense. Uh, the first one we've got here is Tor. Well, actually, all four of these are Tor, starting off with SA-15 Tor M1 from 1991. 
Now we've actually already covered this in the first video because we've had it uh, in DCS for a while but what we didn't have is its three big brothers. We've got the M2 here from 2009. We'll go over the details in a minute. We've got the M2K from 2009 as well. Slightly modified different version. And we've got the M2M here from 2022. They all serve roughly the same purpose but each one has been upgraded over the years. Again let's have a look at the details. First the M2 and we're not going to bore you with all the details plus we've been through these before but it fires the 9M332 surface to air missile. The search radar 14 nautical miles, the track radar 11 miles and importantly the actual missile itself uh, improved over the M1 to a new range of 7 nautical miles. Um, any other interesting points about the M2 over the M1 CH? One thing we should mention is uh, when we go up with the versions, they all have uh, more channels than the previous version, so they can send out more missiles at once. Right, so that's a really important idea to get our head around. Modern SAMs, especially short red like this, are designed to take out lots of targets. Think about drone swarms. So they need more channels, the ability to support as many missiles in the air as possible. The M2K is very similar to the M2. I think it uses the same hardware, but is on a different chassis. Is that right? That is correct. These are exactly the same. These were initially produced, if I remember correctly, for uh, Belarus, uh, but a lot of them have now going back to Russia uh, but uh, it is the same uh, SAM hardware but it's a different chassis. And finally the super modern M2M from 2022. We have a complete rearrangement of the missiles. The missiles it now has 16. The distances of the search and track radar are the same but the new missile the 9M338 has nine nautical miles and it's a real piece of kit. Anything interesting about this CH? The main thing is that it has more missiles, uh, even more channels and a newer type of missile with longer range. Roger. Right, let's see how the boys fare against this. Right, here we go. We have Tor M1, M2, M2K and M2M. All with their missiles ready to fire. The boys have started 20 miles out this time at about 10,000 feet. Guys, attack it as best you can. It'll be interesting to see how the boys find a way around these units. 11 miles out. Not far that yet. Seven miles. Cannonball spike. Yes, yeah, spike. spike. M2M is fired. Would not want to be on the end of this. Dodged. Well done. Okay. Oh, we get a launch on this one. Yep. That's an M1. Someone got fired up by an M1. Good kinematic notch. Very good. Push down. Strider is taking full advantage. Can't go underneath it. Oh, they can. Oh, boys cannot get it through. They've tried notching it. They've tried going over the top or higher. They've tried going super low. So far... These things have absolutely covered every angle. The quick reaction of fire is so good. All right, keep going, the remaining guys. Find a way in. Missile out. Another missile out. Turns oh. out the apartment building was more deadly ah. than the missile. Well, that's a serious thing. Flying low, as you know, beats missiles. But flying low, as in real life, has its own dangers. And you'll fly into things. So, absolutely. Right, Cannibal, it's just you. I don't know what to suggest. It seems pretty impervious. I guess they will eventually run out of ammo. Let me check the ammo supplies. M1 is 50% out of ammo. M2 hasn't fired. Or no, you just can't tell. Can't tell. Cannibal's double back on himself. He is on that nasty seven mile ring. He's turning in. He's doing it. 9M338's after him. Good notch. He's made it to six miles in. Turning a hot leg. 338's out. Notch. Well done. Oh, 
Oh, someone else is in. Doc. Doc, you're not allowed to respawn. What are you doing? Get out. Oh, my bad. Run away. Ignore that, viewers. Hannibal's doing really well. He's going in layers. He's now got within four miles of the site. And it's not happy with him. Very, very angry tours going on here. Ammo supply, M1. Fully depleted. M2 and the others can't tell, so unsure of their ammo supplies. How Cannibal hasn't hit a tree, I don't know. Cannibal is still four miles. Problem he's got now is that he's lost a smoke, so it's hard for him to see where the site is. Turning hot. It's all out. Three, three, two missile! Finally got him! At a range of three miles. The boys got three miles, but they were just overwhelmed by the snap fire ability of these tours. And it wasn't just the modern ones. The old 1990s Tor M1 was actually doing really well, to be honest. In fact, firing before the more modern units, which is interesting. Right, Tor, very hard to beat. Next, viewers, we stay with Shorad. These funny looking things are SA-22 Panzer. I'm sure you are familiar with them already. We have three variants. We have an S1 here with missiles and auto cannons. An S2 here. S1 is the most common in service in real life. S2, I think there's a few of them. This here is the SM. I'm not even sure there's more than a handful of these. And that's very modern. So uh, the S1 from 2012, the S2 from 2015, and the SM from 2020 s1 this is the one you'll probably bump into in russia twin radar assisted auto cannon 30 mil this is the 2a38m with 1400 rounds 5000 rounds per minute burst fire with high explosive tracer and high explosive incendiary it also has 12 missiles 57e6 two miles range for the auto cannons and an impressive 11 miles range from the two-stage booster assisted missile anything interesting about this and what type of guidance are the missiles ch they are command guided uh one thing you can mention is that the eos on it makes for they, they can turn off the uh, track radar and just use the optical sensor so you won't know they are, that you are being tracked this is a common thing with uh, Russian SAMs. Well, to be honest, throughout the ages, 1960s <coughs> SAMs um, could actually do that, turn their radar off and work silently through electro-optical systems. 1970s, Book, they could do it. Uh, a lot of them could do it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no difference here. Um, how many channels have we got on this? Do we know? Yeah, it's that's track channel, uh, two simultaneous two, channel, uh, targets. Yeah. yeah, two channels for this. Right. 2015, the S2 variant with uh, improved radar, improved missiles. Missiles are now up to a range of 16 nautical miles, and the chassis, I think, is the same. Um, and we can now track four simultaneous targets. Anything of interest otherwise about this, CH? As I think you mentioned before, these missiles are also very, very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting looking and very fast. And a fast missile for a SAM is absolutely critical, viewers, as we'll probably see. The faster the missile is, the quicker it can get to target, at which point the mothership can determine whether it's hit the target or not. And if it hasn't, then it can fire another one. The quicker we can do that, then the better the SAM is. Also note how the SAM fires. It points its missile tubes directly at the target rather than having them on the tours firing up and across. That takes extra time. This is the quickest way of getting the missile to the target, making an assessment and firing another one if need be. We don't have a data sheet for the SM, but anything that you know about the SMCH? Well, the main difference is it has a longer range radar. I think it's 75 kilometers uh, and it has uh, an armored cab. It's uh, based on a newer kind of uh, chassis with armor cab. Right, Panzer's in action. We have the S1, the S2 and the SM with its uh, reinforced chassis. Ranges about uh, 12 miles, 14 miles and 16 nautical miles. 
each with its 12 missiles and twin autocannon. Right, guys, good luck. Checking the overview. Boys are just entering danger ring now. S2 has found a target. It's all away. Yeah, we do get a different uh, thing. Not a we launch, do. but... Roger. Changes tone. Roger. Guys are just discussing their radar, their radar signals. Two missiles out and both have been defeated. Well done. I think it was the S2 that was firing. Let me check his barrels. Yep. Two missiles out. Three missiles out. Uh, Two-piece booster section, obviously. These do require line of sight. Uh, more missiles out. They're being cancelled as soon as they fire viewers because they're losing track on the targets. All units have their arms outstretched now. It's a dangerous game, Dark. That is a dangerous game! Boom! Dark down! Strider, he's just capitalising on everyone's deaths. Come on, Strider, find a way in. Well done. That's hard. You gotta kill him. And there's no guns. There's no minimum radius. Yep. Panzers do have guns. This is gonna be real hard for Strider now. They can fire a move. They are un really unhappy with you, Strider. Really unhappy. You damaged their S1 friend. Right, so Strider got the hell out of there, which is a wise thing to do. Oh, we've lost another guy. Who else got shot? Cannonball, what happened? Did you just get hit? Yeah, I just got hit on my mm. turn. All right, here we go. Well on Strider, some great flying there. Let me check their ammo supply. One is empty. Another one is wherever the heck it is. Oh, shit. They are out of ammo. What happened, Strider? I saw. Right, Boosh. In front of me. Yep, that's the thing about danger. Uh, yep. Right, guns, guns, guns. Good luck, Boosh. Oh, you know, I said they were out of ammo, Boosh. <laughs> it appears I lied. I'm out of ammo. You're shooting at a tree. <laughs> Don't you? Know right. You're out of ammo? Yeah. How? Box four. Box four. Well, it's not my airplane. Apparently it's not his airplane. Wait, somehow they're still firing ammo, even though they don't have any ammo in the tubes. I don't know how that's happening, but it is. Oh. Oh, did he dodge it? Boosh. Yeah. He happened to notch it in his turn. Watch it. Are they reloading? No, they're not reloading. I don't know what's happened, viewers. Here comes Poosh for the Fox 4. Boom! Well, that, dem that demonstrated, viewers, how hard these suckers are to beat. Well done, Strider, for getting in and killing the first one, but then the others just went full Terminator on you. And then Boosh came in and did a messed up his cannon. But even if he had a cannon, I'm pretty sure he's going to get out sniped by these these auto cannons. But yeah. The British were used to <gasps> oh, no, running around in a desert. Help! What do I do? <laughs> you used to left arm push. Push, push it! Come on! How hard is it? Yeah, I'm doing it. Yes. Ooh, impressive, impressive. That is quite impressive. Yeah. Skills. All right, maybe yeah. we'll cut that out of the video. Right, viewers. Next, uh, medium to long range. I guess we would call this uh, S. 350, very modern site, 2020. We've got a CP. Note that the units are quite a lot smaller than we've seen before. We've got a uh, search radar. It doesn't have to use this interestingly. It's, a, it's an, a, an, an optional extra, should we say. We have the search yep. track radar. I've got this the right way around, haven't I, CH? Yes, yeah, the search radar. And the first one, uh, as you saw, uh, uh, it can also be used with S400, for example. Huh. I was unaware of that. Uh, we've got the TELS. A look at the different philosophy of TELS viewers to the S400. Some of those S400 TELS only have four missiles in them. This has, I don't even know, I'll find out in a minute, but that looks like probably 12 or 16 uh, TEL there. And another type of missile, we have uh, God knows how many, 32 or something ridiculous. So that's, yeah. that's really impressive. CH, let's go and look at the data sheet. Two types of missile. We have the 9M and 96D. So we were looking at the 9M and 96 as part of the 
S400. This is the D variant, which my understanding is is basically newer and better than the one that we were looking at in the S400. The tail carries 12 of them. Also, now this is really impressive missile, a 9M100 with 32, so even smaller. Search radar, range 162 miles. Search track radar, range 108 miles. The uh, 9M110, uh, 8 miles range, so it's just a titchy-witchy little thing with not much range. The medium-range missile, the 9M96D with a range of 80 miles. Um, I'm going to tell you what I know, which isn't a great deal, but uh, and you correct me. They're both uh, fully active missiles, so they both have their own radar in. It's just a new way of doing uh, missiles. Viewers think uh, Pack 3 on Patriot, for example. The 9M96D is quite maneuverable, uh, but not super, super maneuverable. But the 100 series here is like as I understand it, hyper maneuverable, like the uh, Americans Pack 3 Patriot. Uh, God knows what kind of G overload it is, but it's super high and could be used to intercept very fast moving missiles. That's my understanding. How do you see it? That is correct. Uh, absolutely. It can turn pretty quick, quickly, which it needs to. It doesn't have that much energy, so it needs to hit the target very quickly. So it is short range and need to be maneuverable. It can't turn around so many times. Roger, I'm presuming it's thrust vectored. Is it also, uh, I don't know the word for it, but kind of side thrust assisted, like a Pack 3, or do we know? No, no, I don't think so. Roger, well, it's going to be really interesting to see how this 100 series does against the boys. It does worry me a bit. Stand by. In fact, before we send the boys up against the S350, just to say the S500, uh, which is their kind of newest SAM, we don't have yet. It's just a placeholder. It's pretty much exclusively an anti-ballistic site. Um, the first one went to Moscow in 2021. It's to replace the, well, really aging now, S300V systems that we looked at in the first video. That's why we spent that time looking at the first video. Uh, we probably won't get it in DCS because there's not much point of having anti-ballistic sight because we don't have any ballistic missiles. So it will just sit there and look pretty and won't really do much else, to be honest. Last one, S350. Radar, radar, and command post, and two tails. We only need two tails today because, as we saw, each tail carries a lot of missiles. The boys are starting at 40 miles out, 26,000 feet. Tails erect. Launch. Launch already, wow. Missile launch. We have a 96D active guided missile, so it's going to have its own radar in the nose. Let's see how that does. Boys are scuttling for the ground. The missiles have almost certainly lost. Uh, yeah, wow, okay. Missiles all defeated apart from one. They will require guidance from the mother site until they get within their pit bull range where they can turn their own radar on, which is about seven or eight miles. So, all missiles defeated. Well done. Missile launch again. Yep. The boys are going to struggle to make any progress against this. Let's see how they do. Missiles still on guidance from mothership. If a uh, lot is lost, they do have the ability to carry on until they find a new target, but I don't think that will be modelled today. We will see. Still getting guidance from Mothership. And at this point, in fact, it's probably going to be... Yep, no, not quite within range to turn its own radar on yet. And it had to quit because line of sight was lost. Boys have managed to get 25 miles in so far. Again, the boys can triangulate the site through either its smoke, of which there's not a lot, actually, because these are more or less smokeless missiles. But there is always a bit of smoke. Even smokeless missiles aren't completely smokeless. And, of course, it's radar emissions. No, and gone. Front guy is 18 miles away. Distance. Front guy, 14 miles away. Good luck to you. Nine miles away. Oh, and he is very low. He is really low. Literally scraping the grass. Six miles. This is going to be jolly exciting. I wonder where it's coming from. Probably over there somewhere, viewers. Can you find the site? Can I find the site? I can't find the site. <gasps> Hit by a close-range missile. Didn't quite make it. So close. It's the 100 series coming out now. 
super maneuverable missile. Perfectly suited for this job. Oh, Strider unlucky, sir. Right, two guys left, Poosh and Doc. Can they find a way of getting to this Sam? It's that missile, viewers. It's that 100 series missile. It's a real beast. Super maneuverable, as we talked about. Not really designed for anti-aircraft, but as it turns out, good in this role. Poosh just to the left of the smokestack. Further left. Is that the tree there? Look out for the... Ah! Super maneuverable 100 series out. God damn it. Dark. Find a way of doing it. You are seven miles. You won't be able to drain it. It's got a million of Sams. They get lower than that. I don't think you can outdo it by altitude. It's just too smart. Oh, he's killed himself. <laughs> he's killed. Yeah, yeah, that's it, guys. No. Well, fair and square, guys. We couldn't beat. You can't go over it. Uh, you can't go under it, you can't go around it, and you can't drain it out of friggin' Sam's like you could the S400 or the, the Panzer and whatever, because it just keeps on going forever. That's a real shocker how good that 100 series missile is. Really interesting, guys. Right, viewers, um, those were obviously non-scientific tests. They were more fun than anything, but I hope I've showed some of the capabilities of, of some of the missiles, and that was Russian Sam's, uh, 2007 SA-21 S400 up to, uh, well now, 2023 S350 uh, with the exclusion of the Prometheus. I hope you enjoyed that and bye-bye.